Hey guys, I'm Vilvil and today I'm going to show you my Percy Jackson world. For those of you who have what, read the Percy Jackson books, um, I think you're going to like this. Because it's, I tried to copy the, um, the camp exactly as it was in the books. But if there are some things wrong, just leave it in the comments and I'll fix it. Um, so we can start our tour by um, the gates of Camp Half-Blood, as you can see those golden gates. And this glass around it is the magical barrier that keeps the camp safe from monsters and mortals. So you go in the gates of Camp Half-Blood and the first thing you see is this big, big tree with um, a yellow cloth over it and that is Talia's tree with the golden fleece and that gives the camp its power so the next thing is the big house I bet you all know what the big house is it's the camp's director's home where Chiron lives and where the prophecy is and it's all just like where all the big stuff happens. This is the white sofa in front of the um, fire as the book describes. Um, and then this is Chiron's office. Um, well, there's actually supposed to be pictures all on all around on the walls of the um, of the um, half bloods who have died. But I put pictures on, but I don't really know where they where they've gone right now. So I'll look into that later. Um, and then up here. is the Oracle of Delphi. Yeah, it looks odd. It's just a pumpkin with green arms and sitting on a chair. But, and um, here are all the chests of old stuff that hotbloods want to forget about. So yeah. That's the big house. And then it's got a nice little porch. Very nice for looking at the view. Um, so now we'll move on to the cabins, I guess. Um, well, you know, I guess you know how the cabins are in the shape of a U. So we'll start at one end of the U and go on to the other end. Um, and by the way, this is the old Camp Half-Blood before the minor gods were given cabins. So this is like um, only the main gods. So the first cabin is Cabin 12, the Dionysus Cabin. I put grapevines on the windows for like his god of wine and the and bottles of, well, wine kegs on the walls in case he would like a midnight sip. And then inside it's got um, purple floor and purple roof for um, grapes. And in here there are two beds for his kids to sleep in. Yeah, so there's not much to this cabin, basically all about wine. And that's it. And the next cabin is the Aphrodite cabin, who is the goddess of love and beauty. And in the books, it describes her cabin as an oversized dollhouse. So I tried to make it as much like a dollhouse as possible. Um, and then inside, there are bunks and beds and a mirror. And then in the chest are the boots of shame. But, yeah.
here. And those were the boots of shame were given to an Aphrodite who has misbehaved. It's just something that they did. But then when Piper became um, head of the cabin, she stopped that. Um, moving on. The next cabin we're going to look at is cabin number six, the Athena cabin. In the books it says it has a large owl carved into the door and I tried to make that but as you can see it kind of failed. <laughs> but it's still quite cool inside. In the books it says all the beds are pressed up against the wall as if reading and as if sleeping isn't a big issue. And then there are loads of books for them to read out of and a nice brown mat for them to sit on and study. So yeah, Athena cabin, cabin six. Oh, and there's a sky roof for them to study astronomy at night. So, and the next cabin is cabin eight, which is the Artemis cabin. And as you probably already know, the Artemis, the hunters of Artemis, um, just hang out at camp sometimes and when they do they sleep in this cabin in the books It says it has a silver arrow over the door. So I tried to make that like that arrow there and Then inside There There's not much to this cabin just a load of beds because they don't really Stay here much so they don't need many Stuff much stuff, excuse my grammar. Um, the next cabin is cabin four, the Demeter cabin. And this cabin is very natural, like all wood, grass roof, tree growing on top, sunflowers out of the doorway, um, vines growing over the arch of the door. And inside there are beds, no floor, just grass, and water under the beds for them to hear the sound of running water when they go to sleep, which is quite nice. And then out here they have their own little veggie garden thing. So if they ever, they grow all the food for camp. So, yeah, moving on. The next cabin is cabin two, the Hera cabin. In the books it describes it as a cold, empty cabin because no one lives there. It's more of a shrine to Hera. And it says that there's a peacock's feather over the door. That's that big blue thing. And then inside there is a statue of Hera herself. Not much to this cabin as well. And then this is a really cool cabin. Cabin one, the Zeus cabin. It says in the books that it's a large, it's the biggest of the cabins with grand, um, grand sandstone pillars and gold and very bright. And inside there are even pillars on the inside and glowstone and, and there's a little lightning bolt to represent Zeus and beds. Pretty much all there is. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the Poseidon cabin. It says that this, I tried to make that the subs the Poseidon cabin looked like the sea. It's like blue and green and those cobwebs are supposed to be um, sea foam. Uh, and then on the inside there's Percy's bed, Tyson's bed and the salt water fountain that they sent Iris messages on. And then in the chest is the one, the only Diamond Sword slash Riptide. 
which is pretty cool. Like, and it's kept in that chest just to help other heroes. Oh, it's recovering the night. Um, but I'll, moving on to another cabin. This is the Ares cabin, and in the books it says it's it looks like a war base with barbed wire around it and landmines. So I made it out like dark and scary almost with a cannon on top, TNT cannon, cannon. And then inside, it has bunks like war bunks and more war bunks. And then up is where the more higher standards in the Aries cabin sleep, up here on the higher level. And then this is how you get to your TNT cabin, cannon. So you climb up here, sit in here, and fire. I was, I'm not actually going to fire it, otherwise it would destroy my map. Um, I'm just going to jump off here. And then this cabin here, is my cabin, well, my favorite cabin, the Apollo cabin. Apollo is the god of music, light, and um, archery. So I made it very light, and it's actually a source of light when it's dark. And I tried to make every cabin different, so this is kind of like a... It kind of just turned out this way when I tried to build it. Um, so inside, there are a whole bunch of beds just for them to sleep in. And then in my chest, I have the bow of Apollo. And then in the back, there's like a little place for them to practice their archery. Green, it's bad. Orange, it's okay. And brown, it's brilliant. So I'm just gonna sleep now so it's day when we continue the tour. <coughs> so, yeah. Um, we've only got two cabins left to do. And the next one is the Hephaestus cabin. And this cabin is cabin nine. It's made of bricks and brown clay. Inside there's just a whole bunch of bunks, but then down into the forges are an anvil, lava, water, and a chest full of iron for the camp's weapons. Pretty cool, huh? But, yeah, there's not, other than that, there's nothing else to this cabin. And last but not least, the Hermes cabin. And the Hermes cabin needs to be big because all the undetermined kids go to it. So, if you walk inside, there's just a whole bunch of beds. And then on the upper layer, there's more beds. The other, yeah, there's not really that much. So guys, I'm going to end off the video here and really hope you liked it. There is more to this Camp Half-Blood, but I'm going to um, finish that, finish it on the second half of this video. So really hope you liked it and if you did don't forget to leave a like and hope you hope I see you next time. Bye.